<laughs> Probably an improvement. Oh my god, we have the same cup. <laughs> no way. Like IKEA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be so good. We're fine. <laughs> this is great. We're I already in that. sync. <laughs> yeah. That's the best. I actually love that. I mean, I've never seen anyone else with the same. Well, that's made my day. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Taste you've got. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to The Good Vibes Show. Today I'm joined by Thomas Cameron, musical theatre, classical singer, um, really talented musician. So great to have him on the show today and we're going to talk about his music, his upcoming album and uh, and I'm going to ask him some questions about his voice, how he makes his voice sound so great and hopefully you'll get some tips and tricks for how to make your voice sound as good as his. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because we love subscribers. <laughs> if you like yeah, clicking on things, that. click that button. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, if you could rate the show, that would make a really big difference because uh, get right into it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Really grateful and looking forward to this. I'm, I'm loving your backdrop. We were just talking about it as well. It's, it's giving me chilled vibes. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> it's, it's amazing what you can do with the lights and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should see the other yeah. side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I love about this this Zoom lark, isn't it? We got used to all that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can only look in this one direction. No, I've I've yeah. got a nice little studio here, so I'm very blessed with that. Um, yeah, I but love yeah, it. thank goodness for only one <laughs> only one area needing to be seen sometimes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Awesome. And uh it looks like you're in your studio there. Yeah, yeah. This is where I do sort of a lot of any home recordings and all of my radio work is from here as well. Um, I normally have a lot more, but I'm having a bit of a change around. There's normally more stuff going on behind. But yeah, I do um, a radio show from here and um, any kind of recordings. I do a lot of recordings for people from, you know, like America or Australia, you know, and that's just amazing. Lockdown really helped with that, didn't it? You kind of think, oh, you could just send a file. We don't have to travel halfway across the world to just to do one recording anymore. Wow, how amazing. So yeah, um, it's really fun to have that space, isn't it, as you know? Yeah, it's it's opened up a lot of avenues for people and it's so glad it's so great to see your music really flourishing through all that time and uh, you know where some people have struggled more than others um, it's great that you've been able to power through and discover your radio show and do so many new different things right yeah definitely I think the the main word that I've used all the time is adaption as well isn't it as musicians and you're exactly the same like how we had to adapt and kind of think well actually we can't get out on the road and sing to people and sell records in that way like we used to for now anyway but actually what can we do that's slightly different but still links and connects with fans and followers so mm. yeah I was doing a kind of zoom chat kind of thing and kind of got picked up by a regional local radio station and like do you want to do radio and I thought you know what I've always quite liked it you know I always loved listening to the radio and thought it was really cool so I started there and then a national station really loved it and said would you do a national show which then turned into now the national breakfast show and do you know what I absolutely love it it's so much fun playing song requests and checking in with the regulars now that were texting and saying oh, I'm off to you know I'm off here today or I'm listening in the kitchen or I'm dancing with my daughter whilst we're listening to our favorite tunes or it feels great that your community you know connected to so many different parts of the community all over the world in one time so yeah. yeah, I've really loved it. That's great. A national breakfast show. That's pretty big. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I love it. And I, we always have guests on the Saturdays. So we normally have like a celebrity guest, whether it be normally musicians, uh, but sometimes actors, comedians, people like that as well. But just meeting people that I like at the top of their game and they're so inspiring. You know, I've learned so much from these people and um, people that have toured for years and they've had numerous number one records and gold discs and everything you can imagine. Uh, and then on the Sunday breakfast show, the feature is new music. So it's the completely other end of the spectrum, which I really love. And that's people that are you know, unsigned bands, musicians that send in tracks and love. I just get thousands a day. It's amazing to see like how much music there is. Absolutely incredible. Uh, and then just play them out in the show and get people to follow them and, and listen to their music and just build an, an, another kind of community, isn't it? Two very end, different ends of the spectrum, but both just as amazing. Yeah, yeah. Do you get sick of listening to music sometimes? Because you've got so much music. <laughs> but, yeah, it's hard as well. And it's, it's. I always have to think, you know, because I'll, I'll come in here in the studio, I'll put on the, on the monitors and I'll listen through tracks. And I think you know, the, all of these songs are incredible. You've got, you've got to kind of stay in that zone. You know, like, you know what it's like as well, listening to loads of different songs, or maybe if you've recorded your own stuff and you're listening back to the same thing, it's so easy just to become, oh, yeah. I'm like, actually, no, this is incredible. You know, somebody's written this, you know, get back in the zone and remember that. And yeah, definitely. But it, it's also different as well. Like nowadays, it's unbelievably vast difference. You know, I'll get rapping through to like full on, full time pop, you know, yep. rock, heavy metal and and loads of electronic stuff at the moment. That seems to be really popular. So new electronic kind of artists. 
which yep. again is like a completely different end of the spectrum isn't it so i think because of the variation and everybody gets boring hearing all this different style of music which is really nice oh that's good that's a good tip yeah it's important <laughs> yeah and let's talk about your musical theater because it's quite a unique kind of its own little genre that um i'm sure you have some yeah. really amazing diehard fans that like you know are, are just loving that so much have you seen a resurgence in that genre with what you do yeah it seems to be huge you know and I think again since lockdown I think that idea of the theatre going to the theatre people thought I'm actually really missing that you know I know they did some great shows over here on, on the tv where the people were coming and singing musicals and they were doing parts of the musicals where you were kind of allowed out and they did it in a controlled way where everybody went in and tested and then they put on a show in a theatre and then broadcast it so people could still kind of connect but everyone just thought it's just not the same, you know that. You know that feeling is amazing. It? You go in and everyone's all the chatter and the the music, the, the music's on, the house lights are up, and the excitement. And then when the the lights go down, the music drops, and everyone suddenly you can feel that sort of gasp, can't you? And everyone goes, oh, "What's going to happen?" And then the curtain comes up, and it's just magic, isn't it? There is nothing like it. And I think since you know that time, people have thought, "Do you know what?" we need this theatre is really important it's a really exciting place to be and um people have reconnected and I think more than most you know a lot of genres as well that I've noticed is that with the musical theatre people have such big connections so people come to me and say well I went with this person when I was this age and I remember we went to here for dinner first and then we went there and this happened and it's so descriptive the connections that they make with the musical songs because they're so passionate and they're so powerful and yeah. um yeah I've noticed a real since lockdown even really even more so people are just loving musicals yeah it's interesting that you mentioned that because like musicals is the thing that I don't <laughs> personally don't like the, the most right but they're the things I yeah. can remember like my parents took me to a, a musical of um Wind in the Willows when we were oh amazing I was probably yeah. five years old six years old and um my my mum is one of these people that will just find a way to get things like she basically got us backstage I don't know how yeah my sister my younger <laughs> sister wanted to say the toad like she was in love with him I think <laughs> and um yeah, yeah, yeah. he was in the oh. back taking off his makeup and she cried her eyes out because she <laughs> realized he was a person and not a, oh, not a real goodness. giant frog <laughs> yeah oh my goodness and it was very yeah. like yeah it was very memorable and you're right because it's like sometimes you just you hear music all the time but like seeing it it's like you're sick do you think that that's part of it? Like people are seeing the music in an action. I think so. Yeah, I think it's these people spend so much time, especially seeing so much. I've been doing so many more kind of like workshops with people that direct this kind of musical theatre or working with actors that are doing it in, you know, West End or Broadway, wherever it may be, and kind of seeing how much they put into it. You know, they, they're doing character studies and they're becoming these people every day for like eight hours a day and they're working so hard to actually become this person. And I think that's what it is, isn't it? That kind of way that how much dedication these people put into becoming a different personality or becoming a different person it, it, you kind of become so involved in it don't you and you think oh my yeah. goodness you're, you you find yourself going oh I hope that person's all right I'm like they're not even real but you, you totally are engulfed in it and you don't realize and I think that could be yeah I think you're totally right there and then obviously like you say with your sister going and seeing actually this is a real person not making that connection because of how alive it became and how much this person yeah. becomes this this frog you know yeah. how do we do that but you do you don't you you totally disconnect from the real world when you're in that situation and think this person is a frog you know yeah. and then this is happening yeah. and it's, yeah it's amazing it really is but I think that could be a lot to do with it it's just how much goes into being these characters yeah it's a mad it's a kind of a magic I guess especially for kids like my nephew he's five he's four, four years old and he just went to see Willy Wonka the life oh, production yeah. was on in Perth and he he loves that Love because it. like I started telling him Willy Wonka stories just making them up you know to, to yeah sometimes I tell him a bedtime story or something and um, yeah. the other night I was there and he just randomly said, and it was like months since he'd been to the Willy Wonka. And he said, Auntie Marie, I've seen Willy Wonka. Like, as in, I know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, Love do you know that, that I've that's... seen Willy Wonka? Like, you know, that's I've been it. to that's Willy Wonka. It. Like, yeah, it's so, <laughs> re it's, it's so um, realistic. It's great that you're involved in um, that so, so much. It must be really rewarding, like, doing all of that. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's the best thing, you know, seeing these youngsters getting into it as well. I've just done a week of um, workshop and kind of going into colleges, like performing art colleges and stuff like that with um, Sam Hiller, who's the director of Les, Les Miserables and Phantom at West End at the moment. So wow. he's kind of living and breathing it. And he's obviously casting the people that are in the show. He's making it what it is and what you see on West End stage at the moment. So mm -hmm. he's going in 
showing in that style of stuff and doing Elena's workshop as if they were in the production. And then I'm coming in and, and working with them on the vocal side. And it's just amazing to see how many youngsters are kind of like, this is it. They live and breathe it. You know, they're in the dance studio, they're in the drama studio and they're just, that's what they want. And seeing yeah. somebody like Sam to them was just like royalty, you know, like mm. this, this is so real. It's within touching distance, this guy does it every day. And it's, yeah, one of the best parts of, you know, what we do as well, isn't it? Seeing other people coming and joining what we do in this great fun. Yeah. And when you're making a recording, like, because this is the genre that you record in, right? Do you yeah, yeah. picture yourself as if you're doing the musical, as if you're like, does that play a part in you bringing that forward into the recording? Yeah. I mean, it's it's taken a lot, like long time to do it. And actually I've learned so much from, you know, the, the likes of Sam and people like that, because, you know, I think it's quite hard when I know if you go into the studio and, you know, um, my Kate Roby is amazing pianist who plays on my records and she tours with me. We'll go in and we always record live. So we'll just have a screen between us and we'll have a grand piano and I'll be the other side with a microphone. And it's yeah. really hard just to, to not just go, okay, right, here's the intro. Sing it perfectly and just sing it and make it sound good. And just think about that, you know, getting to that. It's taken me ages. And I feel I've only just got to that point where now I'm going in and thinking, hang on, read through the text first. That I'll read through it and think, right, what's happening? What, what, what am I trying to convey here? What am I feeling? What am I talking about? and get into that and then try and record it, you know, and real show, really show that emotion because when it's not, when I'm not acting and I'm not on a big stage with a set and everything like that, you know, like you would in a musical, mm. it can be a lot harder to get into that kind of emotion, like the one I should be feeling. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's, I feel like it's a skill that I'm still learning, you know, and it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Um, trying to get into that and it's finding a way of connecting. I think that's what I always teach, you know, other people that I might work with, I'll say, look, if the thing is about, you know, I don't know what it may be about, but, you know, driving along the motorway, that's the emotion. If it's a child that's like 10 years old, they can't connect to that emotion. So we need to pull out what the actual overriding feeling is. So it might be excitement and find what finds makes you excited and then connect it. So it's more personal because it's really hard that you say, well, this character's feeling like this. And they're like, well, I don't know what that feels like. I've never experienced that. So actually, instead of thinking about that emotion, it's actually what it makes you feel and then find something in your personal life that you you actually that makes you feel like that. And then think of that. So that's kind of what I do as well. You know, what I mean, it's a good little way of trying to connect to the emotion without just trying to be like someone else, which obviously we're all completely different. So that's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. a lot of your songs, they're where like people know the song, right? They, they, it's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a song from a production, and like, but you're bringing this new life to it, this different voice to it, mm. and um, your flavor into it as well. Obviously, your voice is unique, but um. Yeah, is that something that you notice like when you listen back, you think, oh, when I was thinking of using that emotional stuff, like do you notice a difference in the recordings? Yeah, definitely. I really do. And I noticed that from like first album through to like my latest album that I've just done and recorded the difference in kind of actually I've really meant this, I've thought this mm. and felt this. Um, it's come a long way. And I think it's hard, isn't it? I mean, I was 18 when I did my first record yeah, and it's wow. kind of like, yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm like singing this kind of emotion about what it may be, you know, loss or, yeah. you know, what huge emotions. I'm 18. I'm like, you know, everything's great. 18. Do you know what I mean? You're like, yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't, I didn't know what that was, <laughs> that feeling. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's very different. I've come to it in a very different light, and I've kind of experienced life a, a, bit, a little bit more, like six years later now, rather than just kind of just literally fresh out of college going straight into the studio going yeah cool you're gonna record a studio in this cool place and I'm like yeah hey let's do it you know it's very different feel so yeah that's a great point I do ne definitely notice a difference and going out on the road I think it's helped with that touring and seeing people coming and watch me and they're actually seeing them like you know maybe it's just a lame is song and they, they break into tears you know because that means so much to them all that emotion or I've really caught that emotion and that's made a big difference to me going into the studio thinking god this really makes people, you know, think, and this is really powerful. Um, so yeah, I've definitely noticed a difference. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Like I can resonate with that because I've had quite a lot of people with my songs feedback, things that are quite like is much more extensive that they've gone through than what you like. You might have a song that talks about sadness yeah. or something, but you're like the loss I experienced was like nothing compared to what you've told me. Has got you gone through yeah. in your life. And it's very humbling, but it's it then it makes you feel like, yeah, the next time I write this song, like, yeah, there are these people that are really like struggling and they somehow music is so beautiful in that moment to them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I really, I really agree with that. Cause and that's what I love, isn't it? When you like you say, when you release one of your tracks, for example, it will go out and you you've got a connection to it. There's a reason you've written it, but actually somebody else may have a completely different reason. Um, but it's still the same emotion, but it's completely yeah. different 
from a different experience and that's what's magical about music isn't it people take it in their own way and we all bring our own experiences and kind of find our own meanings to a song I guess don't we and that's what's really magical about it isn't it there's not a set I mean it has to be about this person and that feeling Mm. it doesn't mean so it's open for your own personal experience isn't it what's your favorite type of musical theater to sing or perform like what emotions do you like to sing to convey or play or sing yeah I like there's kind of two really I mean I really I'm really into singing so like the lame is kind of very it's like very passionate very very emotive you know songs and um, like empty chairs empty tables for example that's a huge one for me like it's about you know it's really sad it's obviously the French Revolution is about and it's when they uh, he's lost all of his friends he's the only one that's left and he's kind of feeling this guilt it's like why, why am I left what's happened to everyone else and actually that kind of feeling I don't know what it is but I can I just really get into that and just and I think it's because of the reaction I've had to that as well after releasing that single everyone's saying you know that you really felt that that was really special and I think I was kind of like do you know what yeah I did feel that and you know that was a, I loved that um, and also quite anthemic stuff as well. Like I love seeing stuff that's very kind of da 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 and let me really open up and yep. and sing. So something like anthem really from chess is a big one. Like I love that, and that's like real anthemic, very big and do We're here. This is it, and I love that's kind of I really love singing that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 And when you're doing musical theatre on stage, do you use microphone or sometimes no microphone? Yeah, it varies. That's a cool question. Yeah, yeah, it does vary. I mean, when I'm doing like the bigger shows, we just have to, if, you know, if there's quite a lot of people, then we'll use a microphone. But that's kind of just capturing and it's very different to, you know, maybe a pop singer that might have effects on the microphone. And it's actually part of the show, isn't it? It actually is making a difference to the vocal that have effects on and they'll have a bit of delay and all of this kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, someone like the National Concert Hall, where I am in July, that will always have a microphone there, but it's it's on marginally, basically just to capture my voice for those that are at the back of the room. Because you might be talking sort of like 400 people, so there's people mm. at the back of the room. So it's just capturing it a little tiny bit and just sort of giving it a push in case it gets dropped at the back of the room. Whereas probably the people at the front of the room mostly are just getting my sort of acoustic, mm. you know, me. Mm-hmm. um acapella really or, or a voice without amplification mm-hmm. um but then there's some venues that are, are you know like a, ch- a big church that who needs a microphone in a church it just goes doesn't it mm-hmm. echoes and it's amazing so then I wouldn't use a microphone so it's always we always love to not use one if possible um and it also depends what I've got going on if it's a massive sort of concert grand piano which is you know when Kate's going for the piano it's super loud as well so yeah. we've got to try and get that balance um but I always preferable not to use a microphone because it just makes a big difference, doesn't it? It can get rid of a lot of that atmosphere, can't it, when you sing into a microphone? Yeah. And have you always done this style of singing? It. I know. I didn't start off singing this kind of stuff at all. I used. To, I was definitely. I used to write a lot of stuff when I was younger. It used to be real poppy, kind of alternatives, so a lot of sounds, um, sound effects in it, and stuff like that. And I used to write things like, like about best friends and family members, and like typical cheesy pop kind of stuff, yeah. uh, which I love doing. And yeah, and that that kind of where it all started. And I I remember getting lots of radio play, and it was kind of going along really nicely, and doing lots of gigs. And then I would mix it with some covers of like pop stuff and things like that so it was very much I used, I used to play guitar and sing and that's what I used to do um and then it just got to a point where somebody heard me singing and said oh you know you've got such a good classical voice and I, I had no I, I literally had no idea that that was a possibility so I had to go and I just remember that I always talk about that I can remember singing it thinking I like my body I was like this after like shaking oh, because wow. like your whole body was like resonates when you're like properly going for it everything inside is resonating and afterwards you just feel like you just like let go of your whole soul everything's gone and you're just like oh my goodness, what just happened? And I remember that. And I still get like that now, but nothing like that first time. I can remember thinking, like, I was proper shaky. I thought, I didn't let this could come at me because it's loud, isn't it? And it's one yeah. of those things where, you know, if you do something that's a bit scary or embarrassing or whatever, and after, after for a while, you're like, oh, what just happened? And it was like that, um, but in a, such a positive way. And I remember that. And um, that's kind of when I did that. And I thought, I can't not do this ever again. You know, this is what I've got to do. And just started doing that. And that's what I've done ever since. And people's seems to say it's what suits me so I'm I'm just yeah. going with it you know <laughs> I'm going with the ride yeah I love it and did, did you go and get formal training at that point to help your voice resonate and deal with the loudness and the that yeah yeah I did yeah I um, started having vocal coaching then and just learning how to use it properly because there's so much to it isn't there it's, it's yeah. unbelievable because people think you can just sort of go yeah you know singing is such an easy job you just get up and open your mouth make a noise and get paid to do it like how easy is that you know what I mean like whoa yeah, yeah. money for old rope you know, that's saying but um like think, literally but, that, yeah. yeah exactly you know they could think that whatever um but there's so much to it isn't there and you know, yeah. you know it yourself it's exhausting isn't it and there's so much to do and I needed to know you know 
and, and the biggest thing for me actually what I love I'm so pleased I had training and still do tra- have training is just like having knowing my limits as well so when I was younger obviously starting at about 18 not wanting to go and belt out the massive opera numbers because my voice was so not ready for that that you could so premature like to do that kind yes. of thing that you could easily damage yeah. your voice and still is really for doing the massive opera numbers so just knowing like okay yeah you're probably at that stage where we can go into this more classical stuff your voice is matured it's you know you know yeah. how to use it um so that's been really interesting actually and knowing your limits I think if I'm ever working with any vocalists is that's one of the things I like to talk about first is know your parameters so then one you know you kind of know then that okay this is my range this is where I'm comfortable this is where I'm safe now I can enjoy it I'm not worried thinking oh am I gonna hit that note is it gonna hurt am I gonna if I'm gonna break am I gonna have a voice break whatever just know where you are and then within, within that have the best fun you know you know what you're doing if you know how to use it within those parameters then you're gonna you're gonna be fine you know yeah yeah, so because uh, there's nowhere to hide. Like that's why I was asking you if you use a microphone, right? There's no like yes. if you're just on stage, you've got no. <laughs> it's just you. It's raw, almost yeah. naked, right? There's no yeah. Like a lot of singers even use effects or um, maybe auto tune or something as they're going along yeah, yeah. on a live performance. If you've got none of that, you've just it's just you. It's it's very raw, right? And it's yeah it's real. There's yeah, no, I remember thinking nothing. that. Yeah, I do remember thinking that. I was thinking. My goodness, like, and and it's a difference in the audience as well. I noticed when I first started, especially if you go to certain like concert halls, for example, or you're singing more classical stuff, there's a different expectation. I think I've always said this, you know, with those kind of audience members, they're listening, thinking, oh, you know, let's make sure he pronounces the Italian correctly, and you know, what's his breath control like, and blah, blah, blah. you know, they 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 know about things like phrasing and breath control. They're listening to it, and you're like, yeah. this is terrifying, you know, this is analyzing me. Yeah. Whereas you know, pop song, I can get up and kind of. Yeah, 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 Go, woo, go, yeah, exactly. And obviously, just it's just important. Not saying it's harder, but I feel the expectation is different because people are there to enjoy, and kind of the the the, the pressure's off a little bit more. Right, you know, people are kind of clapping and whooping in between and getting up and getting a drink compared yeah. to like the classical stuff. Everyone's sat completely still and they're staring, and then they just go, and then they stop and they're ready for yeah. the next song. And it's like there's no room for kind of any little hiccups, literally, or anything. You know, it's got to yeah. be so on and it, yeah that took to getting used to especially like you say it's normally the kind of concert hall environment or you know that the churches or if we do we do like cathedral kind of work it's like oh this is really serious you know um but I kind of like to break that down a little bit because in between you know the songs I'll be singing really emotively but in in between my chat and sort of patter is always really fun you know I have a laugh yeah. and I'll be talking about well, you know the guests on the plane just came across and you know we've missed this we missed this flight and ended up here and oh it was a nightmare you know just trying to loosen up the audience a bit more and bring a different vibe to it which I quite enjoy yeah that's good and that'll probably bring in younger people as well especially since you're so young you know it's gonna re- like bring a, a freshness to that genre and yeah audience. I hope so because I feel like you can connect because what we're doing is starting to do a lot of pop songs in a musical theatre style as well yeah. trying to open it up to people as much as possible because thinking you know you don't have to because a lot of younger people just go oh no that's that's for old people you know what I mean that's for serious people mm. you know but it's so not you know there's so and there's so many young people that love musical theatre and like taking a Coldplay song for example um on the new album and we've turned it into like what, what, what I like to call like a spotlight moment you know where everything all the chorus backs off sets dies off it's literally just spotlight in the middle and it's just the piano and the vocal and it's just like a real emotive musical theatre song and actually mm. um it, people are thinking oh I didn't know that a Coldplay song could sound like that or you know we've done George Ezra track and made it really you know really emotive the words are beautiful the melodies are gorgeous in it but people don't always think about it because it's always this kind of like sing along you know loads of effects on it kind of song so I've loved that and it's made like you say younger people think actually this musical theatre is quite clever really and it's it means a lot and it's quite powerful so I've loved doing that and mix with the kind of good bit of a laugh in between it's really made a big difference oh that's great it's such a great um thing to bring to the industry as well like it's probably pretty unique yeah yeah I hope so. yeah it's nice isn't it it's to make it accessible to everyone and what do you do can I ask about like to, to, to keep your voice good um to like what you would advise your because I know you teach students in this area as well um yeah. and, and you're on the road a lot and you know you've you've got to balance out between sometimes obviously not singing with a microphone sometimes set, sometimes having one night after night often doing performances yeah. and all the rest of it and I, it's also to a lesser extent like talking a lot wears your voice out as well like if you're doing radio shows yeah. every day I do yeah. lecturing at uni and like sometimes yeah, yeah, I'll have 20 hours of talking a week and then I can't 
I know my voice was, it's not like it's rooted or anything. It'll still be okay, but it won't be as good <laughs> by the end of yeah. that talking. Right. So what, totally. what do you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you do to keep your, to keep your voice in check? Like what, what, what kind of things do you do? Yeah, that's a really good point, isn't it? I've, you noticed that, don't you? I noticed if I've had a breakfast show and then obviously like I'll be giggling. I've had a few, three gigs this weekend and obviously had the breakfast shows as well. And you kind of feel like, like today it's very tired. Um, but I think keeping, I think the, the main really important things that I've noticed for me is one is rest, which is the hardest thing to do. But you'll mm. notice, you say, if you get up and you've only had two hours sleep, we've had a really rough night's sleep. The first thing that goes is your voice. It'll be croaky. Mm. It'll take ages for you to get it in the morning. Like, hello, it takes you ages to get going, doesn't it? So sleep is so important. Um, and and hydration. So I'm real nerdy about just making sure I'll drink loads. And on stage, I'll always ask for like three bottles of water, like really important. And people are like, oh, you don't need to be drinking. You shouldn't have any water on stage. I'm like, yes, you should. It's really important. <laughs> yeah <laughs> keep hydrated you know that's the only diva things so i'm like actually i won't be able to come back next year on tour because i'll have no voice do you know what i mean so you've had a, you know for the sake yeah. of a bottle of water it's worth it and it really so i'll always be drinking lots before i go on drinking you know not it's not like i'm drinking every like verse you know i'll do a few songs and just grab a drink whilst the, whilst there's yeah. an intro you know it's not i mean there's a there's a limit isn't there you don't want to be kind <laughs> you're of you're not one of those people with a sippy bottle know. while you <laughs> exactly can you imagine <laughs> i don't know if they book me yeah that's it it's just i'm that'd be good yeah yeah all around <laughs> can you imagine every every line just, just hose me sip. down um, <laughs> yeah that would be bad i'm sure there is somebody that's that, that that demanding with water um but yeah no i think that's important because yeah. you just keep lubricated that's so important um especially with speaking as well and then um warming up and like cooling down is so important there's so many singers that like i know that don't uh, don't really know about warming up and don't warm up so much but not only does it protect your voice, it makes it so much easier. Like if you've got big notes in your set, whatever like that, you'll just glide through the set. Your voice will be so ready. It's like, I always liken it to an elastic band. You know, if you like sort of warming up, just very gradually, if you just go boof like that, it's going to snap. Yeah. yeah. If we're just sort of gradually getting it ready like that, you'll notice that an elastic band will just freely move. And that's the same thing with your voice, you know, just get it gradually warmer you know i'll do some tongue twister kind of things first to get my speech ready articulation really cool and then i'll do some real gradual warm-up some humming and some lip trills and stuff like that and then i'll do some slightly bigger ones and then i'll sing a kind of warm-up um and then i'll go in and and then maybe sing a little bit of a song that which isn't like a massive song backstage just quickly and then i'll go on and sing and i feel so ready and your voice afterwards you're like yeah cool that was a great set not oh that was good i need to go lie down you know and i'll notice the difference um so yeah and then a cool down is just again having a drink a few little warm-ups to cool down and just give your voice a little rest um but those are the three things really is hydration sleep and warming up and cooling down and i think you know that mixes really well and looks like it does make a difference for sure yeah it's good that you mentioned that because a lot of people just dismiss it because they're like looking for the secret yeah. thing <laughs> they're yeah. like no but what are these, yeah. what's the other thing what's the secret and exactly it's, yeah it's, it's simple but you yeah. have to do those things yeah, yeah. 100% like the best singers in the world they'll be warming up you know and they're like they, they, everyone has to do it there's no kind of superhuman singers that just don't need to warm up because they're amazing I mean we're all human beings and that's um the way it works really is and it makes sense doesn't it it's like you know it's like, even like a car isn't it that like, takes a little while to get warmed up before you can you'll notice it'll be more responsive once you've driven it for like a few miles before just trying to drive mm. like a crazy man straight away you know oh it's very similar isn't it like gradual get it ready and then everything once it's warm everything's the same isn't it it'll mm. flow better it'll work better it'll be it'll be much more accessible to use uh and it just that's what i say to students as well like if i'm ever work if i'm ever doing like I do a lot of master class like vocals and stuff and i'll say it's so much easier to do why wouldn't you do it you know like it's if, if nothing else if you think oh it's a pain i don't want to have to do that i'm like well just think it's going to make it easier for myself I'm going to be, I'm going to really be able to show off because my voice is going to be on fire, yeah. you know, yeah. think of it like that. If that's what's going to help you, motivate you to do it, then go for it. It's just to make you sound better. Um, yeah. And then we'll just gloss over the fact that it actually just needs to be done because it looks after your voice and your vocal health. Yeah. And I think there's yeah. nothing better as a singer to know, like, you know, when you know you can do something and you come away from a performance or a, or a thing that you like, you know, a, a gig or even a recording or something. And you're like, you know, you did well, like, and you were like, yeah, yeah. I really, you know, I mean, it, it, the opposite of that is the, you know, uh, oh, I can really, <laughs> like, you almost want to tell, I, I can do it. I can really do it. I don't know why yeah. it didn't happen yeah. today. Like, yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> like, but yeah, it's, it's That's almost like point. it's, it makes you like, you, you, you love it doing it more because you're like, yeah, I can, I'm really shining in this. Like you feel it's, it feels good. To, yeah, to, definitely. Yeah. And you feel, yeah. 
you feel really really like you can take over the world almost it's that kind of feeling like i'll get that i'll suddenly get a feeling when i start i'll do the first song i think oh yeah that was good i'm feeling really good about this the crowd are getting involved already first song in loving the you know the piano sounds gorgeous the whole venue is beautiful i'm so ready and then you're just on fire and then you're just performing you know your chat's better in between you because you're more confident you're more relaxed you know i've noticed that as well if i'm if i'm performing i'm not feeling my best like in between you're just not flowing with the chat so much you're not as confident it's because you're not as confident in your ability because you feel a little bit oh i'm not quite on my game here and we're all human i mean we'll get shows where even if we have done the best warm-up in the world we're not going to be on top form you can't help that can you but it's just learning to kind of deal with that and go look i'm struggling a little bit here but i'm going to do everything and i'm going to give everything i can um Mm. with what i've got today and getting used to that isn't it which is quite tricky sometimes not being able to be like all the time yeah 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 people don't think about that do either do they you know they'll listen to these big me- mega stars that are on stage and tv all the time i think oh they're rubbish you know they weren't whatever i'm like yeah but these people are just being worked so hard and their vocal you know their, and then their yeah. vocals you can't control it it's just it's, just, it's human isn't it it's uh, like it's it's not something you can control unfortunately and some days people do struggle more than others to to be on top form yeah and, yeah and there's so yeah. much that goes along with being uh, doing that all the time like I, I don't really want to ever do that myself, <laughs> like because I know no. how hard it's going to be. And yeah, you're like, so <clears> you, <throat> like you go your hotel rooms, you're diff- in different places. It's always a bit hard yeah. to sleep when you're not in your own bed. You know, all those yeah, things like yeah. that's going to affect your sleep. And you know, you're you're in different time zones. You've got jet lag, and sometimes you're, yeah, you know, like you're, you're contending with all that stuff, or or the food wasn't exactly how you normally have it, and that made you a bit sick, or you know, the, like all these little yeah. things that you'd have to contend with all the time when you're on a tour. And, yeah. and you're giving it, giving it out every day, every, cause some people, like you said, they just think, oh, it's such an easy job. You're just working one hour a day. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what it is. That's what you do. do. When you get paid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's really true. It's so much. There's the travel, isn't there? There's the preparation of it. There's the kind of, and then there's what goes on with it when, you know, like if you're at that biggest level is that kind of, you've got that pressure of people thinking, oh, you know, are they going to be good? These, these number one artists, are they going to be amazing live? Or am I, am I going to be straight on social media and say, actually, these guys are rubbish live. Like what a load of rubbish, you know, there's a lot of pressures isn't there. Or if they've yeah. got a new album that's out that week, is it yeah. going to flop? Is it not going to be as good as the last one? I mean, they have extreme pressures that these stars are under, you know, any level, really. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about your new album, because this sounds really exciting. Um, yeah. Do you want to give us um, uh, a little hint about what it's about? Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah, this has been like my most collaborative album. So it's it's all done. It's all recorded uh, and it's been mastered and I'm really proud of it. And uh, it's going to come out at the end of the year is the plan with some singles coming out soon but a big thing for me is that I know they you know I was talking to people so like we need to get another album out we've got to do another I said yeah no totally you've got to do that and um the main thing I said is I want it to be collaborative because lockdown over lockdown you probably saw I did a lot like you know not only just the radio show but it's like released loads of singles with people virtually so we'd kind of record yeah. and send files like we were talking about earlier so and I loved that and I thought what would be nice now the next album I have to covid and the lockdowns and things like that would be to to do a collaborative album so there's i think there's four or five duets on there and um, there's a couple of songs that have been written with other people as well so um really love it and people that i've really respected and that are really are doing amazingly well in the industry and that i've always that taught me a lot as well and are just really good friends and um yeah it's uh very different in terms of the collaborative not had that on, on an album before um and there's some more classical kind of italian tunes on there as well that i've never released so people that have seen me on the road probably see me sing that but i've got a couple of songs on there and there's bonus tracks which are live from st george's in bristol as well which is like mm. the most gorgeous venue and it has that i've got a live string quartet playing with me on there as well so there's are you singing like in italian collaborative... yes there's two tracks on there um which i'm super proud of that are in italian um and it's sort of more classical world like an andrea bocelli track and um like a real traditional italian classical song that everyone knows um as well that's on there so that's been really fun and playing with the um see it was one song in latin as well that i do live with a, a string quartet which was for me uh like pushing me I, that's what i wanted to do i wanted to push myself so mm. much take me out of my comfort zone with this um i thought this is the time to do it so i remember going into st george's it's this massive beautiful sort of church venue it's got the most incredible acoustics you kind of sing and it would just carry you just could stand there and go like that and you go, oh, it's still going. And it was, it's like amazing. Yeah. You just hear it going off into the distance. And, and I had this sort of string quartet behind me 
and they were, and it was like it's, it's as live as it gets because obviously they're playing this big long intro, all of them together, getting these parts perfectly they've rehearsed. And then I had to come in and sing, and it's like because it's all live and at the same time, there's nothing you can do with the voice. You know, it's as is. You know, straight through. There's no oh yeah, well that's fine. We'll take the the voice off and we can manipulate it and add this or cut this out and snip and add another take. It was literally just the strings playing, me singing over the top, all live at the same time because obviously oh, wow. you got like the bleed vocal onto the onto the string tracks as well so it was I can remember just so much pressure I was like oh my goodness this is really scary um but um yeah I did it and I loved it I want the you know the feeling after you know what that's like it's yeah like, yeah feel good now that felt really good you know yeah it's good to have the opportunity to do those little experiments isn't it where you can just try something yeah. new and see what happens and yeah keeps yeah no I think that's important isn't it I think people should do that as much as they can like kind of like push out from so and I'm a bit I'm a bit bad at doing that you know I do like sort of saying oh yeah but I know this song I will do this set because I know this set really well I'm a bit of a you know I'm a bit bad for that so um I think it is good to kind of at the time you're like what am I doing this is the worst decision but actually I think you know going forward I think it's a really really good thing to do and push you mm. out you can't makes you realize what you can actually achieve as well you know there's so much we can achieve that we don't even know we can achieve which is really nice isn't it mm. Well, you're you're just getting started. Like, um, you know, you you've started your career yeah. so young in in uh committing to music, right? Have, have you always yeah. thought that that's what you were going to do with your life? Yeah, I mean, not right at the start. I know there's all sorts of wacky ideas that I wanted. I kind of like it. Kind of, it's really cheesy and kind of what people say a lot, but it did kind of find me in a way. It wasn't really the plan. A bit like finding this style of music. You know, somebody saying, "Oh, you should you you should sing classical," and I said, "Well." Didn't, didn't know that was a thing uh, yeah. but I always used to sing I used to enjoy singing with my mom on the, in the radio or like you know the radio be on and we'd be singing along together or you know I just love seeing people perform and stuff like that um but it didn't come till a bit later you know I wanted to be a pilot and then I wanted to be a policeman and then I there's all sort of what else did I want to be like I was quite into being a teacher at one point which I've obviously do a lot of it as well um <clears throat> and then it just kind of came across it and I thought you know I should do this singing I quite like that and I got the part of Joseph and the school play and that's when I kind of really fell in love with that style of stuff and mum was really supportive she got me singing lessons at about nine yeah. ten and sort of said you know you should do this properly and and I just fell in love with it and thought do you know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna I nothing makes me feel like this you know that feeling I was talking about that kind of oh yeah. like what's that that's amazing and I thought no I can surely nothing else is gonna make me feel like that so I've just got to go for it and do it and I'm so glad that I did because it's every day of the week you know I'm either working with young youngsters that are getting into singing, or working with somebody on a production, or I'm performing, or I'm doing a radio show, or I'm mm. having run my music schools, and it's just like surrounded by music, whether it be myself or, or other people, and I love that. Yeah, mm. I'm really grateful. Yeah, and yeah. like you're quite inspirational for other independent artists, I think, because it's a hard industry to crack crack on with and make a living out of it. Um, let alone mm. do something good with it, <laughs> do something yeah. successful with it. Um, yeah. What kind of advice would you give to people or what's helped you the most, maybe I should ask, in terms of once you decided this is what I want to do and you were like, okay, I'm going to commit to this, um, you know, what 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 things or or thing has helped you the most in like getting getting where you've gotten, like getting, getting the momentum that you've got and, you know, moving on and, um achieving your goals in that way yeah definitely I think one big thing for me is like is saying that you get back what you put in for sure and that I've learned that so much so a lot of people sort of say oh you're such a workaholic you work too much and things like that but with what we do and you know just as well as well is that the more you put in the more you're going to get out it's so direct because we're our own bosses it's our own thing you know if I put in ridiculous amounts of hours and I take that opportunity and I say yes to that and do that and do that and try and do that and do the best I can at everything I get so much back from it because I'll get lovely feedback and then somebody will go well can you come and help direct this because I loved what you did with that or can you come and run this session because you just ran the other session really well or we just loved do you know what I mean that that kind of thing so always be like prepared to put in a lot of work because the more you put in definitely the more you get out and that's one thing one is to just say yes to all the opportunities which everyone always says and everyone hears that a lot but it's so true isn't it mm. you know if people are saying well, i think this don't go oh do you know what i can't i don't know saying they're going to be in anybody there or you know they're not paying me or whatever it's a long drive it doesn't matter you know you don't know who's there you'll get to meet other even if you just get to meet other musicians that are great and you stay friends with and they might play guitar on your record one day because they're a great guitarist or whatever it may be it's that's important take the opportunity um so that's that's always one thing that i say um and then just like remain positive and be nice and is is really important because people love yeah. working with like, do you know what i mean and it sounds yeah. stupid but it's 
it's it's great isn't it you know if everyone's if you're really lovely and supportive of everybody and you're like oh i love what you've done mate. i'd love to do this with you or you know not a diva backstage as well like the amount of stories that you know i've it was even on the way two days ago i did the show and i went backstage they were lovely they'd have like they put a lovely note out welcome and um help yourself to, they put little snacks out and stuff like this and yep. put the stage time and i walked in there and i was they were like oh, okay right well we'll just take a seat like you don't need to do anything we'll come and get you when it's time for you to come on, on the stage and stuff like that don't don't worry about coming and helping i'm like no i'll come and like you know put my mic stand center stage and i'll make sure that everything's ready on they're like what they're like oh we were so worried because this week we've had like some really in this venue you've had some really tricky people and i'm like well that's not happening here like this is we're all a team you know you guys are amazing what you do with the sound and the lights and the stage tech like um and it's just sad isn't it to think that people kind of come on and think well i know i'm better than everyone else you know why am i doing this i should be sat drink sipping champagne whilst you get ready or whatever you know what i mean it's like it's funny yeah. what you see though isn't it and mm. like it's just be nice to everyone and we're all in it together and we you know if one person wasn't there then you would be able to do your job or if that person wasn't doing that then you wouldn't be, you'd look a bit stupid because you'd have no lights turned on on stage you know that mm. kind of thing so just be nice and and support everyone and I think that's lovely anyway isn't it because you'll have more fun what fun is it being kind of not nice to other people I don't see the the and this show's all about that isn't it good vibes good, yeah, good vibes it is good vibes <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. but That's i don't know if you agree with that like and, and find that as well it's just being nice to each other oh, of and, course yeah in any industry yeah, yeah. and you just Absol- yeah. no one is a nice person or an easy to work with person like i just met up with a, a person on the weekend that was interested in doing some song collabs and he he was i oh. you know we just you get talking about and he's like oh i had someone else that i was working with and they just they weren't they weren't mentally well and you know i mean that's unfortunate if you're not mentally well that's not good but like yeah. it's hard to work with people when you, you know you he's like oh i just don't you know could can write great songs but don't know what to expect every time you sort of talk to them like are they going to be yes. like this or like that or you know and it's, hard. it's it, sometimes the talent isn't enough i think that's what you're saying like you know you, you could be really yeah. talented but if you're a you're a dickhead like <laughs> He's still a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely makes no difference. That is so true. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And you hear that all the time, don't you? I was talking to my agent the other day, actually, and who kind of works with the other people, and they said, you know, like, thanks for... They actually said, like, thanks for getting such lovely reports, like, of what you're like backstage and stuff like that. And I said, well, you don't have to thank me. I just thought that's, like, what everyone's like. And I said, "Isn't don't you get that about everyone? And they said, honestly, we've got some insanely talented... A couple of other vocalists and stuff like that that are touring and they said that they the venues will not have them back they're oh, incredibly wow. talented and they just won't they're just horrible backstage they're just really unpleasant they're mean to the sound guys or whatever it may be yeah. there. and they said, the venues don't want that you can be the yeah, best yeah. thing in the world but if you're being horrible to our team and you're making our place not nice to work then they don't want you back and yeah, that, that was that's, really, really interesting. that's like the last person you want to be mean to the south guy <laughs> well, <laughs> I know. Turn you down and then that exactly or just make you sound really tinny or horrible yeah like what i don't understand like these people are you know your close team like they're gonna help but they must love it the sound guys probably they think oh well here we go (laughs) it's gonna be fun (laughs) when somebody's being a bit mean to them so yeah no i think just being nice is and i try and do that and say that to everybody you know especially younger like i've noticed that with a few younger kind of singer songwriters or bands that come up through that i do workshops with and they'll start getting some good gigs that i book for them or start supporting some kind of big names or they'll start getting really good a bit of success because they're gigging about but already they're getting that kind of oh yeah no we're not doing that like are we getting paid for this you know what i mean at like under 18 years old i'm like this is you know, we need to be really careful here you know you take they just take the opportunities enjoy it you know it's really important because people won't want you if you if you're going to be like that and, and be rude yeah. to one another so um yeah something to definitely have in mind early on isn't it really yeah it's a good it's good advice especially from someone who's been around that it, those those situations that can sort of yeah you know, yeah, it, you know. stuff. yeah 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 being on the sort of on the bill with other artists that are kind of just being really horrible to like the backstage mm-hmm. team that are looking after us and I, and I find it really uncomfortable and kind of go to the guys mm-hmm. Yeah, all right like that's sorry about that like just so you know i don't actually know that other person we're just on the bill together you know what i mean yeah, um yeah and it's, it's a funny actually. situation because like in a workplace if that was your workplace you that to- that that wouldn't be tolerated right but it, you are in a workplace 
but yeah. you're not like, do you know what I mean? It's like, they're, they're not your employee, but you're treating them so badly. If you were their boss and they were your employee, you'd be fired yourself or have some kind of 100%. issue, right? So, That's a great meeting. point. Yeah. Like, and yeah, exactly. And what difference is like being a singer or if, if you've got some sort of profile, it makes no, you're no different. You're still a human being and you're exactly yeah. the same as you'd work in any other industry. So yeah, I think that needs to be changed, isn't it? That, that. Yeah. It, yeah. we're all exactly human beings we're all in the same boat we're all equal to one another so treat each other like you'd want to be treated really yeah that's great advice yeah. that's great advice and yeah. d- before we go maybe you could um give us some ideas about like what would you suggest for people that are like trying to make those connections but they haven't got any yet right and they're just like doing it the best they can and they're trying to get out there they're trying to get their music out there um and you know how to, how to, how how what are some things you've done that's worked for you that you've gotten those connections? Like, do you, do you literally just find out where they live and <laughs> go to their house yeah. or like, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, that's a great, I love that question. Cause a lot of people have said that to me, like kind of like, how, how is this happening? Cause I'll just post up saying, oh, it's so great to catch up with so-and-so today and whatever, or people that have literally been my idols for such a long time. But these people are like, I always say to people that like, these people are human beings. Don't think, Oh, like, like for Billy Idol, for example, like don't think, Oh no, he's just like, insane you can't talk to him or like mm. he's royalty or like girls allowed whoever it may be and i've spoken to you that like, i just think of being amazing like they they are just human in the same way and like you've got, got nothing to lose like if you reach out and say this is who i am this is what i do we're great to chat to you i've had this person on the show before and love chatting to them and we actually ended up talking about your record because it inspired what they did you know it'd be great to talk to you and link it all up or whatever and and just trying and you know eventually people will listen you know it's taken me a long time for people to actually want to at that level to kind of communicate with me but once yeah. you get a few as well like a couple that talk to you, you just go oh i spoke to so and so the other day on the show do you fancy coming on they're straight away like yeah cool if he's done it then i better way do it you know it's all like yeah, that okay. it's a funny little thing isn't it um do you know what i mean it's like well if yeah. you spoke to him he must be he can't he can't be rubbish you know it can't be awkward it must be a half decent show so um yeah definitely just don't don't be afraid to just make that first connection um, and don't think big straight away that's that's I, the way i started i started talking to like band members so you know like i used to speak to the keyboard player like i'm really good friends with like the keyboard player from chic for example who are like absolutely love chic and yeah we got really close and, and stayed in touch quite a lot and we did a show together and we did a bit of a record together and we've done stuff together and then kind of he goes oh do you know my mate so and so he's like lead guitarist for Earth, Wind and Fire. I'm like, no, he sounds nice, and you talk to him, and then he's lovely, and then he'll speak mm. highly of you and share the stuff on Facebook and say, oh, I've met this lovely dude today, and then it just gets biggie, you know, and then you just start speaking to the lead singer of so and so or the, you know what I mean, and it gets there. So you know, let, let these people that are part of the band are just as important as the main guys, you know, the guitarists, the keyboard players, the the sound engineers, mm. the managers, you know without them they're not who they are so talk to those guys as well and they're sometimes they've got the better stories anyway because they're kind of like the fly on the wall guitarist that's torn the world toward the world they've yeah. got those stories you know yeah, whereas yeah. the artists like, well, i'm not talking about that you know that's embarrassing so yeah, yeah they, um and they've got that's, great that's connections good. yeah yeah i, I can see that connection everyone. between you um valuing people for who they are like you said with talking to people backstage and how you present yourself and talk to how you treat other people and that kind of then going into like, you're just like, well, you know, anyone in this band is just as valuable as the name that people might more more likely know. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, Absolutely. That's and you'll find that with the artists as well. They'll, they'll do everything. You know, there's a few artists I've talked to that have been just amazing at that. They'll just go, oh, no, yeah, well, my band. It's like, I remember talking to, um, I've lucky spoke to him a few times, but Steve Hackett from Genesis. And yeah, wow. he spent so much time just, he just kept going, oh, yeah, but what guitarist I've got on this tour, it's just, his name is, and he's fantastic. And they're sounding gorgeous in the studio or whatever. And he's kept going back to his band members all the time. And I'm like, that says a lot about a person, doesn't it? How they're saying, actually, you know what I mean? The guitarist or the drummer in this band is really pulling us together, making us sound great. And they deserve mm. that credit. Yeah, I'm the guy from Genesis that everybody knows and helped writing these massive hits. But now I'm on tour on my own. These guys, without them behind me, I, I wouldn't sound any good whatsoever, you know? And and that's lovely, yeah. isn't it? It really is. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. Oh, well, speaking of tours, let's tell everyone oh. about your tour. <laughs> your yeah, tour. yeah. That was a great segue. I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you said you've got a summer tour. Um, you're going to be in Dublin, Edinburgh and Isle of Wight. Um, yeah. As an Australian, those things sound very exotic <laughs> to me. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. I love that. Anything sounds exotic. <laughs> yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got here. You're going to be in Dublin on the 14th of July. 
yeah. uh, touring the Isle of Wight for the t- around the 25th of July for a week. Yeah, and so we're over there. August, you'll be in Edinburgh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And we've got a few other sort of dates among- around that. But those are kind of like the big big ones. And like the Isle of Wight being, it, and it's, it's always a great laugh because the Isle of Wight is absolutely tiny. So like make, doing a week yeah. tour on the Isle of Wight is just everyone's like, you, you must be a genius. How have you worked that out? <laughs> um, but it's actually down to, I'm touring with, it's with, I'm doing uh, like a tour with, it's called Cameron and Christie. So it's me, Thomas Cameron and Mike Christie, who's one yeah. of G4. Um, it's a great vocal group over here um, who came, got sort of grew to fame on the X Factor. They came second on that and um, they're yeah. brilliant guys and kind of, Part four part harmony singing the same kind of stuff as me but like different twinges to it but we met sort of like around just sort of after lockdown when we came out i think really uh, and hit it off and he came and directed one of my shows then he invited me to do the same at his and we did that back and forth a while and then we thought look we need to do something together because people like us singing together we get on really well so we've done cameron and christy now which is this new kind of duo kind of thing like ball and bow kind of feel to it um which is fun and uh yeah so we're doing a tour of the Isle white together and that's us too and then the island show is a solo show um with with me uh at the national concert hall which i love that's like our show that we just love going to it's such a great fun um and then also edinburgh which is this amazing part of the fringe festival um which everyone knows and it's just amazing it's the of the is the energy is electric up there it's like what it's incredible there's thousands and thousands of people everywhere art everywhere you go music jugglers mm. everywhere every corner um and bagpipes generally um so <laughs> it's a great bit of fun yeah yeah that sounds exciting so great and then you've got your album yeah. coming out towards the end of the year and uh yeah that's the plan it feels like a kind of the, the albums are very kind of i feel like it's a light the light the log fire kind of autumn winter vibe so that's the plan okay cool awesome yeah. So exciting. And uh, people can check out your radio show with the various artists that you interview and different um, uh, people that you've got such a variety of um, people that you interview on there. Um, Where can I check that show out? Yes, it's on trueradio.co.uk. So it's every weekend. So if you're in the UK, obviously UK timings is 7 to 10 on yep. a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, but if you go on my Facebook page, so Thomas Cameron or Instagram, you'll see you know me saying, well, I'm live and how you can listen on the link on there yeah, as well right. and that will have all the tour dates and stuff like that and then thomascarantenna.com is where it has all my tour dates and info about me a little bit more and social media links if anyone wants to find out a bit more yeah. i will put all that in the description below this show so if you're listening oh, to this on you. youtube it will be all there if you're on um spotify you will still put it there but sometimes it's a bit harder to see on spotify or App- apple podcasts um, but just go to um, Thomas Cameron's um, Instagram or Facebook. That's probably the best way they can then connect with you to the other things. And because yeah. you, you're always posting about who you're interviewing and things like that. that would yeah. Be, that would be yeah. And it's always a weekly post about who's coming up and they're always completely different, which is great fun. Like from one end of the spectrum to the other of different genres. So I love that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, if you My have pleasure. are still watching here, people, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because we love subscribers. <laughs> if you like yeah, clicking on things, that. click that button. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, if you could rate the show, that would make a really big difference because it just helps us to get found. And um, thank you so much for your time. Um, really appreciate hearing your stories and your advice. That's really gold for people. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me and, and paying some interest in me yabbering on. I love it. <laughs> Thank <Awesome>. you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Nothing but good vibes for the first time in world history.